Cooling curve is one of the most widely used methods for measuring freezing point of a food. It is due to its simplicity and ease of use. The main components are cooling chamber, sample holder for containing sample, insulation, thermocouple, and digital thermometer. Cooling environment could be a low temperature freezer, low temperature liquid solvent bath, liquid nitrogen, or dry ice. First, digital thermometer needs to be calibrated. In this case, we are using an ice water mixer to calibrate. The thermometer should provide the reading at 0 degree C. However, it displayed 0.1 degree C. Therefore, the measured reading should be subtracted by 0.1 degree C. We need to fill a cylindrical sample holder with a sample. In this experiment, we used freeze-dried sardine. However, any other forms of the sample could be used, such as powder, liquid, or gel. Cylindrical sample holder was then placed in a fabricated insulating box. You can see how the insulating box are preparing. A thermocouple was placed at the center of the cylinder. We are now checking the initial temperature of the sample. It is showing temperature is 24.1 degree C. The insulated box with sample holder was then placed in a freezer at minus 50 degree C and count the time as zero. The initial temperature was 24.6 degrees C. Start recording the temperature. For example, one minute interval until it reaches equilibrium. Plot the temperature as a function of time and then identify freezing point at the onset of freezing plateau. We have recorded the temperature of fresh sardine fish as a function of time and plotted in Excel. The moisture content of the reconstituted freeze-dried sardine was 0.71 gram per gram sample, that is 71% water. First, we can observe the pre-freezing period. Uh, cooling rate was calculated from the initial slope of the cooling curve, and it was observed as 
0.64 degree C per minute. It was reported that cooling rate at around 0.5 to 2 degree C per minute was the optimum cooling rate since increasing cooling rate could decrease the measured freezing point. In this case, water in the sample may not have enough time to form ice since crystallization is a dynamic process. The onset of horizontal freezing plateau, that is highest temperature of the plateau, was considered as freezing point which was minus 1.5 degrees C. We did not observe the supercooling in this experiment. The freezing point was also observed as minus 1.3 degrees C as measured by differential scanning calorimetry that is DSC which is close as measured by cooling curve method. The end of the freezing plateau was observed as minus 2.6 degrees C. The end of the freezing plateau was, was followed by the tempering period. In addition, freezing point could decrease with the increase of cooling rate. Therefore, optimum cooling rate with a 0.5 to 2 degrees C per minute should be used. We could observe the frozen sample at the end of the freezing process. Like other methods, the sensitivity of the cooling curve method also could be reduced with the decrease of water content. Since at low water content, freezing plateau was difficult to trace. In this graph, we could see that freezing plateau could not be traced for the sardine sample with a moisture content 40 percent that is 40 gram per 100 gram sample. Even when the cooling rate was increased six times higher still we could not observe the freezing plateau. In the case of freezing point measurement of sardine we did not observe any supercooling as explained in the earlier slides. Our earlier data in the case of sucrose syrup showed supercooling while a starch solution did not show any supercooling. I have explained the supercooling in my earlier videos on freezing process. The factors affecting supercooling are cooling rate that is extent of insulation and cooling medium temperature, sample mass, geometric dimension of the sample holder, composition and heterogeneity of the sample. Advantages of cooling curve are it is simple and requires low cost instrument. Solid, liquid, gel and powder samples could be used. Data analysis is simple. It can handle bigger sample that is more representative of the heterogeneous sample could be taken as compared to the differential scanning calorimetry that is DSC. The main limitation, the sensitivity of the cooling curve is reduced with the decrease of sample moisture content. This is the main limitation of this method. It is commonly difficult to measure if moisture content is less than 60 percent. We have measured the cooling curve of reconstituted freeze dried sardine at a moisture content 40 percent. At a slow cooling rate with insulation we did not trace the freezing point. Similar behavior was also observed in the case of higher cooling rate. However, this problem is valid for other methods but may be at a lower extent in the case of DSC. I would like to thank Dr. Nasser Al Habsi, Engineer Rashid Al Balishwi, and Mr. Muhammad Al Aremi.